Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization. Welcome back to another Sophisticated Saturday where together we work through my to-do list and get things done around the house. Number one on today's to-do list is to get a little bit of spring decor going in the house. So you'll see I pulled out my spring decor bin, also popping upstairs to check out what candles I have. I wanted to try and switch out some of the more winter scents for a little bit more spring and summery scents. And I'm sure if you followed me for a while, you won't be too surprised by this, but I don't have a lot of spring decor. Spring and summer, I basically consider the same once it's done with winter time. I just try and do something that will get me all the way through the summer and then the next time I change out decor will be for the fall, so it's gonna be a while. And in the fall and the winter, I do have a fair amount. I still am not the type of person to overdo it by any means with decor, but my spring and summer bin is so incredibly minimal. I'm gonna put everything out that I have and you'll see that it's not a lot of stuff. So the first thing that I did was change out the greenery in my entryway you saw. I had some winter white stems in that white pitcher and I just replaced it with eucalyptus leaves and that was pretty much it for there. Added a little candle and now I am in my kitchen cleaning off the countertops because if I'm gonna change out the decor, the least I could do is start with a clean space there. It is springtime after all, spring cleaning. I'd love to hear from all of you. Do you actually do something different when it comes to spring cleaning? Is there something specifically you do with your house? House. you go through all of your rooms and give it a deep clean do you do some decluttering like I do I don't necessarily do a lot of deep cleaning in the spring any different than I do from other seasons I like to deep clean throughout the year but I completely understand how spring and the nice warm weather does bring in that energy and makes you want to refresh your spaces This little bowl here after Christmas, I had white ornaments in there and after I took it out, I didn't have something else to put in there. So it was kind of just sitting there with a candle. I have different pieces of decor that I use throughout the year in this bowl and usually put a candle in the middle. But for some reason, the winter months that are not the Christmas holidays, it kind of just sat blank. So I'm excited to put a little bit of greenery in here. And then I put a lemon candle in the middle and I'm going to also make a lemon display with a clear glass vase that I have and some fake lemons and little greenery sprigs. Once I got that set up, I realized that the lemon candle would look so much better next to it. So I grabbed the lemon candle and moved it over. And I'm going to put a different watermelon candle in the middle of the kitchen island there. Okay, so believe it or not, that is my spring refresh. That's all I do. I don't change out anything else. I might maybe this year see if there's other items of decor that I want to include or if there's more greenery or flowers that I want to change out. I am still really looking for some sort of a centerpiece that I can put on our kitchen table here that I'm sitting at right now. I want to have something that's long because this table is so long. It's not even extended totally right now. It extends even further. So I want something that's long and that I could potentially switch things out for the seasons. I just haven't found anything that I love. So if you know of anything, please, please, please let me know. I've been shopping around and I just haven't found anything that I love. I have found some things that 
potentially fall into this category, but oftentimes they're more of a farmhouse style and that's not really the style of our house or my style. So I am still on the hunt. You'll see now that I'm doing one of my weekly activities and that is meal planning. I was watching a show on my iPad as I do oftentimes. I had my meal planner out there. So I'm filling a grocery pickup order at the same time as I'm meal planning. So I'm putting things into a list of what meals I wanna cook on that acrylic meal planning board. And then as I'm going through every single recipe, I'm flagging it and tagging it so I can easily access it and find it when I'm going to cook that recipe and running through the list of ingredients, anything that I don't have in my kitchen and my pantry, fridge, freezer already, I'm gonna add it to my grocery list. I don't necessarily place the grocery order right that very moment, sometimes I do, but at least it's sitting in my cart ready to go and I know what ingredients that I need. Now that that grocery list is done, I can clean up the kitchen even more. Though I had cleaned off the surfaces, I had a clean dishwasher that needed to be emptied out and a sink full of dishes. You may not have noticed that before, but I have a dirty sink, so I need to get the clean dishes put away and put those dirty dishes back into the dishwasher. We've been loving using our air fryer. So that was sitting in there. I had some water bottles that I needed to hand wash and those air fryer baskets. You can put them in the dishwasher, but they take up so much space. It's almost just not worth it for me. So I hand wash those as well and lay them out on the little drying pad to dry. Finally, I'm just gonna use some soft scrub there and scrub out the sink because it was dirty from a lot of food and I am guilty of not doing this often enough. Today we had some laundry to fold. I was sorting it by my stuff versus Jim's stuff. You'll see I was talking to Jim because he did pop in there for a second. He was gonna fold his laundry a little bit later, but I like to lay his stuff out for him so it doesn't get too wrinkly. We've had a really good laundry routine going for a little while now where I have specific days of the week where I do specific loads of laundry and I'm starting to feel like the only part of this that is not working out, actually maybe there's two things that aren't working out now that I think about it. Number one is that our dark laundry, it seems as if we have way too much of it to be washing it just once a week. It almost feels as if we need to break it into multiple categories. So I was thinking either I wash darks twice a week or like once every X amount of days. Not sure if that makes sense. I would prefer to keep it on a specific day of the week just so I can keep that cadence and know, you know, every single whatever day I wash this color. Every single Wednesday I wash our towels, for example. So I was thinking maybe we need a category for medium colors. Or when I was going through the laundry and moving things from 
the washing machine to the dryer and I have to sort through every single time and see if there's something that needs to be hang dried or laid flat or half dried or whatever the case might be. There's so many items that have not so many. There are some items that I want to be conscious of and make sure they don't go through the dryer like the bulk of our clothing. And I was thinking, what if I make a category in our washing schedule? Because we do have one extra basket that we don't have any category of laundry and it just sits there empty. What if we use that one for clothing that shouldn't go through the dryer? How much easier would that make my life that I wouldn't have to go through every single load of laundry and carefully try and pick things out that should go through the dryer? And I have to be honest, I do miss things sometimes and then things shrink or I just am kicking myself that I didn't catch it as I was moving it from the washing machine to the dryer. I'm just not sure if there's enough clothing to do that load once a week. Maybe it could be something I do every other week because we don't wear, usually it's formal clothing or nicer clothing that can't go through the dryer. We don't wear that stuff as often so maybe it could be washed every other week, but I'm probably gonna have that conversation with Jim and see what he thinks about that idea. But let me know what you think of that idea and if that might work. As you can tell, I'm in the kitchen getting today's recipe prepped, and this is an air fryer recipe. It's on a non bread. There's a chicken that I'm getting all marinated here with a bunch of different spices. This recipe, Jim said it's the best air fryer recipe he's had so far. He hasn't been impressed with a lot of the other ones that I've been trying so far. A lot of them have been really similar, so I think part of it was the fact that this one was different, and it was on top of non bread, which is always delicious. I sometimes do make non bread from scratch. The only thing is making naan bread from scratch is a little bit of an ordeal. So I wanted to cut a few corners today and did buy some store-bought naan bread. When I make the homemade naan bread, I always double, triple, I don't quadruple it, but I usually double or triple it and try and freeze some for the next time so I can save a little bit of effort. The steps were a little bit complicated in making this and I think you probably could simplify it a little bit. So there's a mixture of chicken and cauliflower and it's weird because you mix all of it together and then you have to separate it into two different bowls because they have different cooking times and cooking temperatures. So I probably would just put them in two separate bowls to start with. I think you would make that marinated one and then separate the marinade out into the two separate bowls. Owen was hanging out on the floor and he really wanted to see what was going on and it was just the two of us alone in the house. Jim was gone so I pulled him up onto his little toddler tower. This thing has been such a lifesaver because he's too small and too short to see up on the countertop and he always wants to be with me and wants to see the action. It is tough because he's a little bit too young to actually help out and have him pour ingredients in mixing bowls and things like that. So I usually just let him play with a few spoons or when I'm baking cupcakes, he plays with the silicone cupcake molds. He also has some trucks right now and you see, I just let him throw them in the sink there and I just keep pulling them out. And there is a bar behind him that keeps it so he doesn't fall backwards. So don't worry, it is safe for him to be in here. And I'm right next to him. If you see us dancing around or me kind of singing it's because we were listening to some Sesame Street music, which was also probably helping keep him happy.
bouncing. He's so excited. Alexa, stop. That was so much fun. Yeah, so Owen obviously just got up from his nap and we had to sing along to a little bit of Sesame Street, huh? Well, we finished up cooking for dinner, but that was really fun and he loves to dance, yeah. So I think we're gonna turn the music back on and keep going, huh? I tried to put him back in the toddler tower. He wasn't having that. Then I tried to hold him while I was getting stuff done and realized when I'm using a knife, I most definitely need two hands. So he was playing with the bottom drawer of our kitchen, which is all of his stuff. I let him go to town on that and just destroy it. It's never organized. I sometimes try and get back in there and organize it, but it usually lasts no more than a day. So this is the step I was talking about where you weirdly have to separate out the chicken from the cauliflower bowl. Very strange. I probably should have read this recipe in advance, but it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. I'm picking out the chicken and I'll mix it up with the onions, get the cauliflower in one of the air fryer baskets and the chicken in another. This has actually been really nice to have the double basket air fryer. I didn't think I was gonna like having two baskets, but number one, when I'm cooking two different things at different temperatures or different lengths of time, you can also match the cooking on both. So if you just are cooking the exact same thing, you could have them both be on the same settings, or you can have them finish at the same time if they have different lengths of time and different temperatures, you can use that setting as well, which is really cool. So while those are going, I am getting out my flatbreads and getting that prepped. And then we're gonna head into the living room for a second and Owen is gonna play around while I try and pick up toys without him making too much of a mess of all of the other toys. We got the living room picked up and Jim got home. So it was time to finish off the non-bread flatbreads here with the chicken. I put them in the toaster oven and just warmed them up a bit. I'm topping them with Greek yogurt as well as that red onion mixture and some cilantro. Jim isn't as much of a veggie person as I am, so I did mine really heavy veggie loaded and his I actually just did the chicken. I knew he was gonna prefer it that way. So we can review this recipe three different ways, one with just the chicken, one with a mix, and one with just the veggies, and all were excellent. Finally time to sit down for dinner and you'll see Owen is with us. He's having some of his own food. He's having applesauce, which he usually has as a snack. And I am going to pour the rest of the applesauce container into his reusable pouches. I have just started doing this because it's so much cheaper to make my own pouches, even if you're not making the food, just buying in bulk and buying these large jars of applesauce and putting them into reusable pouches has saved a lot of money. So that's it for today's Sophisticated Saturday. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe, like this video, and until next time, I will see you guys later.